Is it possible for someone to hack your laptop or your desktop computer without having access to your password? Is it possible for someone who has physical access to your device to be able to access your files and folders even though they don't know what your password is? Welcome to AJ Labs. In this video, we're going to be looking at hacking a Windows 11 system and accessing files and folders without having a password, as well as how you can prevent that from happening to you on your device. Let's go over to the VMware Virtual Machine and take a look. So as you can see, I'm on my uh, VMware Workstation uh, application and I'm running a Windows 11 virtual machine and I wanted to start here so you can see um, that on my Windows 11 um, workstation, I've got a password set. So let's log into this so you can see AJ Labs. If I type in my secure password, only I know this password, nobody else does. So I wouldn't expect anybody to be able to get into my system. If I press enter, that logs me into my desktop. Um, so as you can see, on the desktop, I've got a uh, top secret folder. I've created this folder here. And then in there, I've also put a text file, and I've just called it top secret document. The purpose uh, is to show you that I'll be able to access this later on without even having access to the, pa uh, the password of the system. Now, you're wondering, how can you do this? Obviously, the computer started up you've logged into your Windows with your password, how is it possible for someone else to be able to access your machine and your files and your data, you know, without um, without your password? Now, sometimes, you know, you could lose your device, for example, if you lost your laptop and somebody else got hold of it. There are two ways they can access your information that's on that device without knowing your password. One is obviously to remove the hard drive from your machine. If I go to my Explorer, I'll just show you my hard drive. So if somebody physically had access to your laptop, for example, or your desktop computer and they remove the hard disk from it, uh, they can then access any data that's on there. So if I go to this PC, you can see my C drive is just about 60 gig in size. So if somebody was to take this out and connect it to another device, they'd be able to access uh, the data that's on there. But if they didn't physically take it out and they wanted to access your data without disconnecting the hard drive from your machine, can they still do that? And the answer is yes, there is a second way. And that's what we're going to do here today. So um, if I just open up my C drive and I go to my users, what you'll see is the user accounts that are on my Windows 11 device. And here's my AJ Labs user account on my profile folder. And if I go into that, you'll see all of my uh, common folders, such as desktop, documents, downloads, etc. Right. So these are the folders that we're going to try and access. If I close this off, so in order to access uh, the system, what we're going to need to do is download an operating system called Linux. So what we're going to do is download Linux. I'm going to then attach it to my virtual machine. So let me just show you where to download it from first. So if you just go to linuxmint.com, for example, that's the version that I'm using. You can use Ubuntu, you can use Kali, you can use any other version of Linux. Once you've downloaded your Linux operating system, if you're doing this experiment, on a physical machine, you are going to need a USB. I had one here somewhere. So you're going to need a USB device and you're going to need to create yourself a bootable USB device. So you can then connect this to the laptop or the PC and boot from it, therefore allowing you to load the Linux operating system. If you're doing it on a virtual lab like myself, then what you can do is download the image file. Once you've downloaded Linux Mint or whatever version of Linux you're using, you can then come over to your VMware workstation if you're using that or your virtual box or whatever it is, go to your removable devices and um, go to settings. And here is where I attached my, um, to the CD-ROM drive of the virtual machine, is where I attached my image file that I downloaded. So the Linux image file that I downloaded, as you can see here, I'll just quickly highlight that, is right there and I've attached it. So what's going to happen is this virtual machine is going to boot from this Linux image and it's going to load the Linux operating system. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so yeah, let me just reboot this machine. So we're going to reboot Windows. We don't need to use Windows anymore. Now just imagine you found uh, this person's found a laptop or I found a laptop or a, a computer device that I've had access to and I'm booting the Linux operating system from it. Um, and then this should then allow me to launch the Linux operating system 
and uh, get me up and running. Okay, once it's restarting, all we need to do, oh, I've actually booted into Windows again. Ah, let me just press reset, reset. And I've got to be quick on this because it's a virtual machine. I've got to quickly press delete. Obviously on a physical device, you're going to need to press whatever, um, whatever key on your keyboard allows you to access your BIOS settings or your bootloader or your boot menu, sorry. So in my case, I press delete. Sometimes it's F12, could possibly be F10 for some people. So I'm going to boot from the CD-ROM drive, as you can see here. Press enter on that. And now that's given me my bootloader for the Linux operating system. I'm going to select Start Linux Mint. It may be Ubuntu for you or another version. Once I click on Start, what you'll see is this will now load the Linux Mint operating system. So this is loading another operating system on top of my Windows 10, and it's just using the hard drive, sorry, the, uh, the, the hardware of the device. So rather than loading Windows 10, it's using the hard, uh, hardware of the laptop or the desktop or whatever it is, and it's loading itself, the, the, this version of Linux, onto the hardware. So we've completely bypassed Windows. So as you can see, I've got an option to install Lin uh, Linux, which I'm not going to do. Uh, I've got a fold, my home folder here, and I've got a computer option. If I double click on the computer, what you'll see is the CD drive and the 60 gig hard drive. I don't know why it's seeing it as 64 gig. I'm not sure, but it's uh, uh, that's the hard drive that we had on our system, which had the Windows 11 on it. Um, by the way, this can work on any version of Windows and also uh, Apple Mac as well. So you can actually load this on an Apple Mac laptop, boot from the USB drive, or if it's a virtual machine, boot from it, uh, boot from the ISO file, and then access the hard drive as well as uh, access all the data that's on the uh, on that on that device. So if I double click on that hard disk, here's the users folder that I was showing you earlier on. And here is the user profiles for the user accounts that we had on our Windows 11 system. So if I click on AJ Labs, as you can see, I've got my desktop, my documents, downloads, and all the other folders that are commonly available, all right? So if I double click on desktop, we had our top secret folder. And from there, we've got our top secret file. And there you go. We've accessed the laptop or the desktop's uh, drive without having access to the password of that person. So regardless of whether the person has a password on their computer or not, you can still access their data, which is a very uh, obviously it's 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 a it's a big vulnerability. How can you mitigate against this? Let me just open this. Oh, actually, let me right click on this and open with. Let me see if I can open it with uh, Linux's Office version of Office, the Libra. There you go. So it's a blank document. I didn't type anything in there. And it's as simple as that. We've accessed the data on the system. So therefore, if you lose your laptop or somebody has physical access to your desktop computer and they can boot Linux uh, off of it, then you, uh, your data is actually, um, it is possible for them to access your data. How can you mitigate against this? Well, first thing is to make sure your hard disk on your device, your laptop or your desktop is encrypted. If your disk is encrypted, then gaining access like this will not be possible. The second way is to uh, make sure that you disable booting from the, uh, sorry, booting from USB in your BIOS settings. So if you go to your laptops or your desktop computers BIOS settings, normally if you press the F2 key when you reboot your machine, you can go into your BIOS settings and you can delete, sorry, not delete, you can um, disable booting from your booting from a USB device. So when someone plugs in a USB device, they can't boot from it. So that's two ways that you can, um, uh, the two main ways that you can actually mitigate from it. The third way is to make sure that your BIOS, um, your, sorry, your BIOS uh, system has a password on there. So make sure you set a password for your BIOS uh, settings. So when somebody tries to boot or access the BIOS, they can't access it unless they have a password for it. So at the time of booting your device, they need a password. So there's, three key ways to make sure that nobody accesses your data. If you lose your device, for example, if it's a laptop and you've lost it, 
or if you have a desktop and somebody's able to physically access that desktop. The one benefit we can take away from this is in fact it can come in quite useful. So for example, if you have a Windows 11 laptop, a Windows 10 laptop or computer, um, an Apple Mac computer and you've locked yourself out, for example you've forgotten your password and you've got some important data on your hard disk or on that computer, providing that your computer, your hard disk isn't encrypted, providing that the hard disk isn't faulty, then you can actually use this process to access the system and then back up your data and remove all your data from there. That will then allow you to completely wipe your machine, I guess, reinstall Windows or Mac OS or whatever it was. But before you do that, you can obviously take out your data and, and save any important information that you had on your system. So that is the one plus side that we can actually take away from this process. As always, if you've enjoyed this video and it's benefited you, then please do like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next video.